Flames and smoke filled the air near Billings yesterday afternoon, leaving more than a million dollars in damage. We have the details of that fire coming up. I'm Cody Boyer, a Montana Fire Department on the road to help those in need against the California wildfires. Woke up this morning to a nasty surprise. Good morning, 6.30 here on your Tuesday. I'm Missy O'Malley with Chet Lehman and Matt Elwell. We'll get to Cody Boyer's story here in just a moment. We were just saying how lovely yesterday it's was. It's beautiful it was yesterday. Today, not so bad. I just stepped outside a couple of minutes ago. It feels fantastic. Yeah. Good day to get outside, uh, take a little stroll, enjoy the sunshine because oh, things yeah. are changing <laughs> very soon. Oh, right I'm now, sure. temperatures into the 30s. We've got a couple of 40s out there. Very mild morning. The afternoon is going to be mild as well, but the cloud cover that's in place really helping to boost those temperatures just a few degrees, and that's a nice springboard as we head into the afternoon. There may be a little patchy fog in a few areas, some of those low-lying areas. So uh, if you are driving near some of those uh, low-lying river areas, you may have some fog to deal with. Temperatures are going to be mild today, but much cooler tomorrow. We'll, of course, break down your forecast in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for that, Matt. Now, some residents have been evacuated in West Yellowstone early this morning because of a nearby fire. Yeah, West Yellowstone police tell us that a fire in a mechanic shop on Yellowstone Avenue led to those evacuations. So far, no injuries have been reported, but firefighters are on the scene. Blaze was first reported about four this morning, still uh, not under control by 440. Please tell us no other buildings are burning because of the fire, though. But evacuations were ordered just to be safe because there might be flammable liquids in that shop. We, of course, will keep you updated online and on air as more news becomes available. Let's stay in fire related news. It took fire crews more than five hours to completely douse a fire in Lockwood near Billings yesterday. MTN Zoe Zandora was on scene where a lack of water meant Lockwood fire crews and assisting agencies were forced to bring everything they could to just fight that blaze. This building has a lot of fuels and oils and such on the floor, a lot of different things they use to treat the metal and you're seeing the result of it. Firefighters responded to a fire at the Pacific Recycling Building in Lockwood around noon on Monday. Flames and smoke filled the air as the fire blazed for more than two hours, likely causing more than a million dollars in damage and destroying one building at the Lockwood plant. We use what they call master streams. That's large diameter hose, two and a half and larger. We also had both the ladder truck from Billings and our ladder truck set up. And those things pump between 500 and 1,000 gallons a minute. Those tenders only hold 3,000 gallons a piece. So that's, that was another big challenge. And the blaze was a challenge to battle because of water access, Daly says. Closest hydrant, as you can see, we're using the shuttle. And if it not for the help from Shepard and Laurel and Billings and even the airport, yeah, we would have no water. Six tender engines responded to the fire. The most, Staley said, he has ever seen at one fire in his four-decade career. One male employee was injured but declined transport. Daly says the fire was likely caused by heated metal materials that were being transported on a conveyor belt from one building to another, the fire growing quickly. Probably not going to save much. It had a really good start before we got here. and what, Lack of water is kind of a tough thing for us to overcome. In Lockwood, Zoe Zandora, MTN News. So he tells us those fire that flames finally put out about 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. And police in Idaho Falls are investigating after someone stole more than $1,000 worth of equipment from a fire truck. Yeah, that fire truck belonged to a crew from Livingston who were on their way back home from fighting wildfires in California. MTN's Cody Boyer picks up the story. It doesn't only hurt us, our department, but it hurts everybody else. Truck Commander Wyatt Adler, EMT Cheyenne Bray, and first-year firefighter Dale Bush spent over a week and a half fighting the Kincaid Fire, which has burned more than 77,000 acres so far. I caught up with them on their return trip home hours after thieves struck. If we would have gotten to California and this stuff was missing down there there's no way we would have been allowed on the fire adler says over fifteen hundred dollars worth of critical gear was stripped away from their truck including personal protection equipment fire bags for shelters and more we've actually had to take ourselves off of the active resource board for national emergencies because now we're not equipped to keep ourselves safe. Idaho Falls police arrested a man parked nearby for drug-related charges, but as of now, it is not known if he is connected. The crew says it's like losing a life-saving arm. It feels like your whole world gets taken away. You know, your, your equipment to save lives, to do your job, 
is gone. My pack had all of our, my medical equipment in it. I mean, on our way home today, if we come across a car accident, I mean, I've got my skills in my head, but I don't have a lot to help anybody anymore. So while Idaho Falls police investigate, Wyatt hopes eyes stay open. I hope whoever Kate took it realizes, hey, that we messed up more than just their lives. We messed up countless of other people's. In Bozeman, Cody Boyer, MTN News. Now, since we first reported this story, we've learned that a company has helped by offering to replace the department's Kestrel fire tracking unit for free. Others are also starting to help as well. It's amazing when people can pitch in, but boy, yeah. I tell you, it makes me just it's infuriated horrible, mad. horrible that we even uh, have to have this conversation. And there has been a significant amount of snowfall in the Gallatin Valley this fall. Which means there's enough snow for avalanches. The Gallatin National Forest Avalanche Center says there's already been natural and ski triggered avalanches this year. But fortunately, no one has been caught. They say people planning adventures in the backcountry should be prepared with proper equipment and education. Now, a series of avalanche awareness courses will be held this week in Bozeman. It's important that folks take these classes so that if they are venturing into the backcountry, they can identify if they're entering into avalanche terrain and, if, and, and do so consciously and then be prepared to assess the snowpack and carry the, the proper rescue gear. Those avalanche awareness courses are free, open to anyone interested in learning how to be safe in the backcountry. First course will be tomorrow, 6 o'clock, and they're holding it at the REI in Bozeman. And in Great Falls, two men were sentenced in connection with shooting and a kidnapping that took place last March. Uh, according to court documents on Thursday, March 21st, Russell Joseph Garcia and Tim Shrek approached a man in the Walmart parking lot on Smelter Avenue in Great Falls. Court documents say they demanded the man return a backpack they believe uh, he stole from Shrek's vehicle. Garcia then shot the man in the foot. Documents say, uh, say both Garcia and Shrek forced him into Shrek's vehicle, insisting he show them where he had taken the backpack. And today, both Garcia and Shrek are being sentenced, or this happened yesterday, excuse me, to 10 years in prison, but they are eligible for suspension after five years. The court sought restitution from Shrek, but not from Garcia. During his sentencing, Garcia apologized to the victim and to the community for putting them at risk. Garcia was high on methamphetamine at the time of his offense, and he agreed to get treatment while in prison. In other news, a Helena man accused of molesting and attempting to rape an underage girl, 54-year-old Lauren John Beto, appeared via video in Lewis and Clark County Justice Court on two felony charges of sexual assault and attempted sexual intercourse without consent. The two alleged incidents reportedly happened on separate occasions and involved a girl who was under the age of 16. Bond set at $25,000 with the condition, wearing a GPS upon release, he will make his plea in district court coming up on November 27th. And the municipal golf course in Butte may be closed for the season, but the golfers have a new clubhouse to look forward to. Construct ex construction expected to begin next spring on a new $2.5 million clubhouse at Stodden Park. It'll be much bigger than the current one, include golf simulators, full kitchen, pro shop, covered storage for golf carts. We're, we're, we're catching up with the times. We're, we're behind. In, in this particular building, we're way behind. I, I don't have the room for adequate a pro shop. We're not serving food. We're only just serving hot dogs. But, I mean, now we will be fully operational. That's awesome. By the way, that funding uh, for the new clubhouse donated by the Dennis and Phyllis Washington Foundation. 6.38. Time to take a break here on your Tuesday morning in a moment. A speed trap to make people slow down takes a little bit of a bruiser. We're going to explain that story for you in just a moment. We'll have that story, but first let's check in with Anthony Mason to see what's coming up at 7 o'clock on CBS This Morning. Good morning ahead on CBS This Morning. Americans ambushed in Mexico hear from family members who say the nine killed by a cartel were not the intended targets. Plus, America's top election security official shows Tony what's being done to prevent outside interference in 2020. Also, actress and comedian Jenny Slate, the voice behind Marcel the Shell, talks to us about finding creative inspiration through hard truths and whimsical comments. We'll see you at 7. 